Success in farming is all about precision and efficiency. Ensuring every seed, every drop of water, every nutrient and treatment counts. TerraPlex Ag is helping farmers all over Iowa and the Midwest do just that. With precision ag drone technology and support from TerraPlex, you'll boost your productivity and make timely and informed decisions, all while reducing your costs and increasing your profit. It's time to revolutionize your farming. Harvest the benefits with TerraPlex Ag. Visit TerraPlexAg.com. Welcome to Williams and Bloom Wednesday here on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. Recording at noon, went a little bit earlier today. We're usually live at 1.30 on Wednesdays. This is a nooner. Got the big event tonight. Uh, the former Cyclone Fanatic recruiting party that Bloom just stole from us. I'm kidding. I like acting bitter, but I'm really not. I'm glad I don't have to plan that thing anymore. <laughs> we have our big oh We gosh. Will event. I was joking with a friend last night how much classier it is now than the old cake stand days at so my guy mitch sent me listened on monday and he sent me a picture of him and wally burnham from like the very oh, first one at the cake stand he's those like, days were that awesome. got out of control that yes. first cake stand party when we had it in the very back yeah that's where this picture's from and mitch you look a lot younger in that photo, that was my favorite event i think cf's ever done because it was the first real blowout one we didn't know we had that much reach at that time and we had that there you go oh that's yeah with coach Rhodes. that's awesome yeah. i have this great picture of me and my dad and my uncle dick and my uncle dick's wearing hawkeye stuff <laughs> with Rhodes. and Rhodes is like you idiot oh, it was god it was a fun night what a i i miss those days but these these days are great too tonight will be, yeah, a great be really fun everybody's worked really hard on it i know uh, and they and i just want to thank everybody so there are auction items online check the we will collective yep. twitter uh, we just put up actually a Tyrese Halliburton autograph jersey, a oh, George cool. Niang autograph jersey, Monte Morris autograph jersey, and Monte. I just looked. Monte signed his. Go State, Monte Morris, aka Big Game Tay. Oh, that's which cool. is pretty cool. Um, and that's then awesome. Taylor Horton Tucker, who no one talks about. Taylor's having a nice year. Yeah, he, he still is like super close to the program, which which is really cool. So he just wasn't there long. I know, and he. Taylor was one of those guys behind the scenes, like when you travel with him, with a super sweet kid. Yeah, he's, he's like a, super duper nice, but he didn't really give that to the fans, right? Because he was, I, I think, shot. Done. He was know? very shy, and he was done, and he was out of there. I'd love to in the off season try and get him on a pod or what, and let the audience kind of get to know him because he, he was always him. one of those just super nice, almost like too nice. And I think sometimes it affected his play because he was sometimes was passive, and people took that almost as aloof. God, think about wasn't. all the talent on that team. My gross. God. Just gross. But uh, then there's also drinks with me, you, Walters, and Heft that uh, is on the silent auction as well. And right now our guy, willinga has got, got the bid. It's on there. It's 500 bucks. I mean, that seems like a pretty good deal for dinner and drinks with <laughs> us yahoos. Or horsemen. <laughs> Uh, we are presented as always by our friends at Mechdyne. Actually, Clover won that. Clover last won year. that last year. He, he, he bought that last year, and we went to a speakeasy. Uh, Mechdyne Corporation, M E C H D Y N E dot com. Bittersweet show today. We are celebrating an Iowa State win. We are grieving the loss of Toby Keith. Bloom walked into an emotional um, live rendition of "Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue." I have met him before. You met Toby Keith at the Big Twelve uh, tournament, women's basketball tournament. Because he's in Oklahoma. He's big old. He used guy. to play at Oklahoma. Yeah, he played football there, and then he was a huge Oklahoma fan. I think, and it, I know for a fact this: the Sam Bradford game, good old Jr. the WWE announcer, up in, up in Ames. Yes. Yeah, he was there. Yep. Because I shook his hand, and I'm, I don't want to. I think Toby Keith was at that game. Too. He has been to. I think he was there. He may have. I know he's been to Ames before. Yeah. To watch Oklahoma, and I, he's been at probably I a know dozen Iowa State games. He's been to a lot of those games in Norman. Yes. Oh, for sure. Because they used they to used, show him on TV he all would, the time. He would go every every game. Yeah, that was kind of his passion outside of his music was oh, the you, Sooners. <sighs> well, hang in there. Sixty-two pal. years old, man. Yeah, that's gone too soon we're getting i mean that's the thing I, again this happens to everybody but now it's like oh man they, they didn't seem that old he's not anyway let's uh let's get after it here and talk about last night's big win for the i real quick the women don't play tonight they are on their bye week which is great 
they they needed a little time to refresh. So we probably won't have a lot of women's basketball conversation on a more abbreviated show. We'll probably stick to 45 minutes or so today as opposed to the hour. As we both have a really late night ahead of us, the um, men go on the road last night and beat Texas 75 or 72 65. Ken Palm stays the same net ranking up to nine. They hopped over North Carolina, who lost a home game to Clemson. Iowa State is now uh, four and four in quad one games. So metrics look great. They metrics look great. look great. They look great. This is kind of a uh, excuse me. They are four and three in quad one, two and two in quad two. So somebody must have dropped out of the quad one. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, four matter. quad one wins. You're looking right now in really good shape. And on top of that, Brent, the uh, Big 12 championship is within reach for this it, Iowa State it team. It really is. And, I, and after I, winning at Texas, I, I, you know, you want to get, you're through half of it now, you know, and you're, you're six and three. And I would argue the front half was a little bit more challenging than the back half. Potentially, now you're going to have to take care of business at home. I, you're right there. I know Houston's still the favorite, as it probably should be. They still have that, what, half game. Obviously, it has to go down there, but I would say it has a tiebreaker on them for now. Now you play them again. I think you can. I think the discussion is realistic. Uh, we, we can play the odds game. I just looked this morning. I would say now firmly in second. Firmly in second place in, okay. in, in odds, and Houston firmly in first. But my opinion is, say, four-horse race now. I think it's four for folks, I think I was it's looking more and more. And again, you're half you got half the games to go of being played on Thursday in Kansas City, which is great. Yeah, and then then you're also talk big picture uh, when the seeds start coming out, or when some of the, the 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 brackets start coming out. You're three seed now, probably. Mm -hmm. I think pretty. Yeah, after right last there. night, I yeah. think you are. And then you're securely, you're on. you're trending. You're trending towards the two line. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, you're getting into some some territory Iowa State has rarely been. In. I think if you're, I mean, if you're top three in this league, you probably will be a two seed. It's, you're going to be on the. You're going to be two three. The two, thing three about seed. Iowa State is they've got great wins. They've got those wins that you look for it, now. Absolutely, you've beaten it, Kansas. You've beaten Houston. You have a road win at Texas, right? Like the, the, this isn't some because you could knock them on the strength of schedule, but you can't knock them on the strength of schedule anymore. You've no. literally beaten what four teams in the top 15 kind of felt like after the Baylor game too, it was like, if you can win at Texas or at Cincinnati, one of the two doesn't matter which one you'd really put yourself in a position. Now that's assuming you take care of business at home, which is not an easy, not, assumption. Not, including on Saturday, by TCU the way, you could jump up and bite and, and has in Hilton. before. Yes, that yeah, absolutely. I, we we got to hammer guarantee. that point home. I mean, Texas tech is fading a little bit, but they gave Baylor everything they wanted last night. Baylor pulled away in the last 10 minutes of that basketball game. Yep. You would like to think you could beat West Virginia at home. Yep. And I, I, I still think Oklahoma, they had a big win last night against BYU, but I, I think that they're going to, do you know that Oklahoma right now, and according to Ken Palm, at least is a quad two game at home. Like I, we it's told you guys out. to fade Oklahoma. They, they looked good last night. They, yeah. That's maybe as BYU good as they was coming off of a sec. They, that's they a hadn't come trip. home. That's a weird. Yeah, trip for sure. uh, they go from West Virginia to Norman back. That, that's hard. That's where the BYU thing is going to be difficult. Well, they're going to have some partners, I guess, next year once the Pac-12 teams year. come over. Nonetheless, let's talk about that basketball yeah. game last what, night. Uh, I thought that I thought C Dubs the first twenty-five minutes of that game. Iowa State played as well as it has all year. I mean, that was that first 25 minutes was, and I, I don't take this lightly, Elite Eight level good. And credit to the staff for getting that team mentally prepared. That was why it was just a little weird. I thought it would be a game like that, or they're going to be totally flat after how the Baylor game ended. And they weren't. They were ready to go. You say Elite Eight level, it felt like a tournament game. It did. And then, you know, Iowa State just, which was fun against Texas, just physically was better, just dominated. That felt like a mismatch in the first 25 minutes. And Texas is an odd constructed team. I, 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 I'm I kind of baffled what they did in the offseason to pair A. Smith with Hunter and that the Weaver guy played great, but he's not big either. Iowa State bullied them, just completely bullied them in the first 25 minutes. Then the, that 10-minute stretch where Texas cut into it that was honestly, I obviously didn't play poorly. That was as simple as Dylan DeSue just got mm -hmm. on 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 fire. You know, it was like NBA Jam style. Uh, but Iowa State held on, 
And then Taman, man, it got a little nerve wracking there. He misses that that free throw again. You're going, come on, Taman. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. then he buried. He had like four straight plays in the last four minutes that were unbelievable. Taman won that game. He won the game. He won the game for them in the last four minutes. And that's exactly what you hope to have happen. And TJ said in the post game, they challenged Taman, which they don't normally have to do because Taman had not played great the past couple of games since he came back from injury. But man, did he come to play. And it was so glaring in a positive for Iowa State, the matchup between Lipsy and Hunter. Yeah. And that's not a shot at Hunter. Uh, it is what it is. One well, guy's just a lot Lipsy's better. Lipsy's just way better. He just is way better. And that um, that was fun. I mean, there, for a lot of reasons, it's probably the last time you might see Texas in the Big 12 tournament. It's going to be the last time you play in Austin. Iowa State doesn't play well there. I think that's the third time they've ever beat Texas in Austin. So just a tremendous win for all of those reasons. And you're starting to see, you know, Flipsy plays that well. I thought Milan was was as good. Dude, the he one looked he like hit, an NBA player when he was getting to his spots yesterday. Every time he hits one of those fadeaways, I think of you in the collective, and I'm just like, <laughs> God. Like that one he hit late in the second oh, half. Oh, it was a massive, massive I mean, shot. You couldn't guard it. But he's getting more and more... He knows where he wants to get now, and yeah. that's exciting. And he hit the first five points. It's like, okay. And I thought Kurt Jones was really good. Keyshawn was good again. Jones again. Jones and – Those free throws at the end, there's there's nobody I want at the line totally more than agree. him. And if Rob Jones and Hassan, who played well, could just make a layup or dunk the ball, that game is not – Why don't big guys dunk it more? I will never be able to answer that question. No, I really was wondering this because Ward had a couple of those, and then King had the one – no, he yeah, made up for it, yeah. but it's like, what do you just dunk it, dude? Look, there's got to be a re- like. I'm never gonna be six foot nine or whatever. Same. It's like dunk it. You would think it'd be easier, wouldn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, luckily, it didn't matter. Didn't matter. Luckily, and, it didn't matter. But and I know it got. Actually, I think in the long run, that that's okay. Like to get tested like that and then to, to no make doubt. the plays. I, that was a grown up. That was a grown up win for Iowa State. One of the things that stood out to me when I was breaking down this box score is Iowa State only had one turnover in the second half. So it wasn't like this team just lost its mind. It just didn't shoot well. Thirty one percent in the half compared to and a lot and of it was around the rim. Like I mean, you just that's yeah, the shot you want. They they did go ten of thirteen from the free throw line. So Better. that was encouraging. Nonetheless, the the thing too, Brent, about this team is I don't like doing a comp to the last two years because we we told you guys all summer and offseason. Yeah, it's, it's just different. Like the, there's not a lot of comps to be made. But okay, so Keyshawn Gilbert, who goes off at Baylor, right? He goes two of eight. Still had seven rebounds and two assists to go with it in 30 minutes with his yeah, eight points, he, but he was good on defense. there's just so much more depth where these guys pick each other up. Even Pavelski coming off the bench with nine huge, minutes huge. and he has six huge points. Yeah. You don't win the game without no him. Question. And even Watson's seven minutes were really, really good. He had a phenomenal defense, two points and a rebound during that time. Every guy they put onto the court right now is confident and they look like a Big 12 player. We haven't been able to say that even where the last two years were very successful by all standards. This is just a different level. Yeah. I, so I thought it was interesting. Iowa State only turns over Texas 12 times. Is that what it ended up? 14. 14. Iowa State had 12 turnovers. The uh, Iowa State, this is eight. just no, another. Iowa State at eight. Iowa State at eight, 14. Stat that you just watch, and you can almost tell if Iowa State's going to win, is the points off turnovers, 18-6 to six last night. Which, 14 against Iowa State is well below the average. So Texas actually did okay, but that's that's a credit to... I thought Iowa State's half court, especially in that first half, very methodical, almost Wisconsin-like. They just grinded them. Like they, I, I thought it would be the case, because Hunter and Aceman's are really small. I thought Gilbert and Jones and Taman would be able to bully them, and they did. I give a lot of credit to the scouting report and Iowa State just looked fresh and ready to go, and um, man, that's a like I said, that's a that's a grown up win right there. That was a team that was honestly physically better, mentally tougher, and got it done. Iowa State did look like a Big Twelve championship contender last night, no question. I'd like to thank a couple of our sponsors, and I want to make one more point about Lipsy that probably doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, first of all, thank our friends at Gravitate Co working. I actually just got an email from. Somebody who heard about Gravitate Coworking from our reads here, and they're a huge Gravitate Coworking 
user now. Our advertising works. Love I it. promise you, it works really well. So gravitatecoworking.com. Also, our friend Hope Wood, she uh, is she's in the will business. She'll make you a will in the day. One day. That's all it takes. Use your promo code Fanatics. You can get $50 off. Hopewoodjd.com. That's hopewoodjd.com. And our buddy, Jeff Kelderman at Kelderman Manufacturing, he's got four tickets tonight. Yeah. He will be in attendance. He told me uh, that him and, and the boys are coming up from Oscaloosa. Yeah, that's right. Can't wait. No, but real quick on that, thank you to those who, again, the power of Cycling Fanatic. Kudos to you. Uh, we had probably 50 folks from out of state that bought a ticket for this that just donated it. So we get, that's awesome. So we have like, we have like 60 letter winners coming. That's so cool. Um, let's, I mean, actually some recent guys too, that just graduated. I'm looking so forward to that really aspect cool. of tonight as much as any catching up with some of these guys. Yeah, and, it's yeah. The same. Um, so that again, this place is special. Like cycling nation is special and, and fanatic and the, our advertisers of the whole thing, it all works. And so can't thank you guys enough. Looking forward to it. Uh, I wanted to make the point about Lipsy. You have a better historical perspective than I do. I'm more of a latest and greatest type guy, unfortunately. But I, I would venture to say, and, and maybe the program tracks this. I can't find anywhere that does. The off-ball plays that Taman makes that lead to points oh my God, it's has immeasurable. to be like up there with any player in the program's history. It's just the hustle plays that turn into something else. It's it's like the double assist in hockey or whatever. It's like, honestly, the, the, the three guys, I would say, uh, would be Curtis Stinson, mm -hmm. just did a lot of those things. It was like, man, he's just in the right place. Curtis the was the good at everything. Yeah, he was just kind of good and worked uh, really hard. And then Halliburton did it in a different way. But man, that guy was always making an impact when he was on the floor. I got a Stevie Johnson last night. A couple people threw him out to me. See, see, yeah, Steve and different. Steve different was a, era. like a, you know, technically he was a lot of big guy, but, but he, he made forward. those hustle yeah, he type did. plays. That's a, that, I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, even Kenny Pratt did some of that of just getting in the way. But Taman, Taman in that second half, there were four plays that don't that you can't see them. Yeah, but and I, it was like, oh my, how did he do that? I'm guessing too when they. This isn't a shot at the other guys. There's there's not another guy on the team that works that hard to make some of the plays that he's making, and, and, and that's because he exceeds it so much, right? Like, not that the other guys aren't playing hard. It's just Taman was taught last year, hey, dude, the only way you're really going to be a Big 12 player as a freshman is if, if you play it this way. And he's now he's gotten a lot better skill-wise, but he's still making those yeah. plays. I uh, Actually, the I thought the TV guys did okay. Somehow I got a login, so I've watched it, unlike a lot of folks. So I didn't mind the TV guys. But Adrian, I watched it. Adrian Branch, who was the, did you steal the analyst. It? No, I didn't steal it. I got a login from like an in-law. No, oh, I, I bought... Sling for sling. one well, night. Good for you. Uh, the sling appreciates that. Good for the stock price for Dish. They have a. Oh, is that owned by Dish? Yeah. Sling's owned by Dish. Yeah. So why don't these things all just collaborate and just be? Why isn't Sling just called Dish or Dish called Sling? That doesn't make any sense to me. The interface is actually really nice. It's fine. I messed around with it last yeah, it's night. Fine. Like it's yeah. It's. Do you see the announce? We'll get it. Uh, the announce that collaboration. ESPN yeah. and Fox. We'll do that yeah, Sunday. Let's stick around. Yeah. Well. Yeah, no, we yeah, post game yeah. Super Bowl post game show Sunday. Is that I think yeah, we gotta wait. We, yeah, we can't yeah, we can't not brock it. Yeah. <laughs> um but no, so I was gonna say something and now I forgot it. You this is we what were talking do. about sling sling. You watched the oh, game, watched the announcers. The game. Yeah, Adrian Branch, thank you. He he had a comp with Taman to Jameer Nelson, my yeah, buddy I heard from the that. magic. Yeah, I was like, that's actually pretty good. And his that's boy plays good. for TCU now. Yeah, and Jameer was Jameer was in the NBA for 10, 12 years, and he was actually a phenomenal dude. So he was the point guard when I was in Orlando with those actually decent Magic teams. Uh, I'd say Jameer's, Jameer's a little bit better shooter, but the point is what Nelson did, and did about the same size as Taman, but just got it, got in the was in the right place at the right time and just outworked you. That's where Iowa State won the game. Iowa State just, it was like the Brees Hall quote, five-star culture over five-star talent. Iowa State worked harder in those first 25 minutes, and that's, even though DeSue had an unbelievable stretch, Iowa State had enough room, and then Taman with a couple daggers with his hustle, plus the two big shots as well. And even that that one little floater thing he hit, that was big time. So he is he is a first-team All-Big 12 player. I think Gilbert's playing at that level too. I, um, I was that's just say... a fun thing is you got, you got multiple guys. And this, I'm telling you guys, I think this team has as much upside 
since the Niang era, and this team guards better than that team. This team just is so much more, which I know this is maddening to drought proof, though. It like, is. And I, and it's, like, it's I know throw. there are levels of frustration where they can get stuck in a rut offensively, but the bigs are just so much better. I'm, it's funny. I'm, I'm writing in the, in the book right now. I'm working on the, the North Carolina game with Daniel Dozy. Oh, the dozer. Had, right. Like in, and you think back to those teams and it's just like, they didn't have big guys. Did not. You know, it was hope until McKay came in yeah. and, and McKay wasn't really a big guy either. No, was like just, it was, but like now you you really have three guys and it's like, well, if Rob's not doing it and I, and I'm really like, I get fatigued on the Rob hate. Yeah. I get fatigued on it. This team's not where it is without that guy. Oh, there's there's yeah, no doubt. I just, just stop. The real ones know. Yeah. The real ones do, but the casuals don't. And it, it gets really old. Like he, every game. And like, I understand when, when he's missing, I get it. Layups. It's like, Big fell. But Ward was missing layups, yeah. and Trey has missed yeah. a ton of layups this year. So it's just, it's kind of, I appreciate the guy for what he is. He's worked so hard to become the player. And he still made a couple of really nice post moves last night. Yeah. That he could never make and, a year ago. You know, and the thing is, is this is not, this is not uh, Cyclone Fanatic Kool Aid here. If you look at the national championship odds now, this is, national, this, is, this is not me. This is Vegas. I would say it's got like the eighth best odds to win the national championship. Not surprised I mean, because it's a complete team. You are getting into these points where Iowa State just hasn't been in a while. And it it crept up a little bit because Iowa State, you know, it's like, oh, is it the bad schedule? They're just beating up on bad teams. And now it's like, no, now the big wins are mm -hmm. matching what the metrics said all along, which is actually credit to uh, metrics, first of all. Go data, go. But uh, big data, guys. I just love data. Um, but it's, I just, I think this is going to be a fun next month. I'm, I'm pumped that game at Houston. Uh, largely, I mean, that, there could be a conference championship on the line. I really believe that. Now you got to take care God, of business. That's terrifying. Well, I, at least you got a shot. Yeah. What the hell got into Kelvin <laughs> Sampson? <last laughs> that was a Tim Floyd move. These, he, he, he did you hear his quote? You see yes. his quote? He basically said the Big 12, he said, the, I would like to say what Mac Rhodes said, but I'd get fined, which was a good, good deep hole because Mac Rhodes did get fined yesterday. 25K. 25K. Which we had to do. Totally anticipated. Uh, but yeah, he did, and they're up 20. He just, he pulled the Floyd. Dude, he just ran across the other Did you see end? the one ref? So there were the two out there and the one closest to Kelvin was looking at him like, what, what is you, wrong what with you? you? Go back and watch it. Sucks. It's hilarious. The one, I don't know what his name was. He's like, what is your problem, yeah. man? It was so the guy who threw him out, who he was mad at was Tony Padilla. Uh, the guy who he's an at, A, right? Padilla's yeah. a, he's an A crew, right? I just go off of what you tell me. Every every official blooms like, well, he's done a final four. Padilla, I mean, this is I a would good not, crew. This I, is an NCAA I would, tournament. I would not put Padilla in Blum's the same. never like, oh, these guys suck. They never get into no, it's a good crew. They, it's a good solid B plus. I thought the officials did a fine job in the Iowa State Texas game. Did anybody complain you this. about that? I I'm not I don't have a complaint, but I have an observation because I watch all of these games so closely. Is this real or am I imagining it? That more often than not, and I'll and I'll help you, our audience, try and make a little money here. If you're watching these games oh closely, boy. oh boy! If you're alive, better. I'm telling you. Okay. More often than not, in these Big Twelve, now they have to be at like loud arenas. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're playing in Stillwater and nobody's there. That doesn't matter. It has to be these really bombastic crowds. You know, yeah. like big atmospheres. These Big Twelve. They're not Big 12 refs. These officials go into these Big 12 games, and the first half is a freaking bloodbath. It's UFC. These They get away with everything, okay? And they always, always go into the break and say, oh, we got to get a handle on this game. It's getting out of control. And the whistles come in the second half, specifically in the first 10 minutes of the second half, and they come heavy. So if a team, it doesn't matter who it is, blindly do it. If there's a team in the Big 12, Maybe take the top and the bottom out. Okay, so maybe throw Houston out. Houston, I think they're I think they're a level above everybody else. Throw out the bottom two. If there's a team that has a 17, 15 to 20 point lead, bet the other team in the second half. Yeah. As far as the because the whistles, I, the, I'm not saying the refs are rigging no, it I, or I, they're even doing bad. I think it's natural to, for them to watch. Oh, well, that guy's bleeding, that guy's bleeding, that guy's cussing at me. We got to get control over this. Well, thing. There is a little bit to that, I, I 100%. I, 
and also I would say there's a regression of the mean both ways. Yeah, I mean generally absolutely. these teams are pretty even. We saw that with Texas last. So they weren't going to shoot that way in the second. And then Desu got hot. And yeah. then yes, I did think there was a couple calls in the second half. It's like ah, give the benefit of the doubt the team that's behind 15. Honestly, yeah, so yes, absolutely. There's something to that. I, I truly believe that's I, a thing. There, that is I I and I don't think if I don't know if it's on purpose, but you just. There is, especially at home. I also think it comes with having all these 23-year-olds playing. Yeah. They're well, just more physical. And Iowa State is so physical that it's just like, at first, it's an adjustment. I thought Texas actually did a really nice job of slowing down and getting some good looks in the second half. But yeah, no, that's the overs in the second half and the home there's team so in the There's so many half. free throws there's, in the second halves of these There's something to that. I sure. would love, that's some data you should try and pull. Free throws in Big 12 games shot the in the half. first half compared to the second half. Now, granted, it's not perfect because you don't foul intentionally at the end of the first half. Like, you, So it's not perfect. True. Maybe you do the first 15 minutes of each half. I, I don't know how you could. No, I'll I, leave that to people smarter than me. It's there, There's something there for sure. And I, But I, again, I don't, I'm trying to think who was even doing the game last night. Like I didn't recognize. Oh, Amy Bonner. I, I like Amy Bonner. She does a nice job. I think she's fine. But anyway, Kelvin Sampson. Who, he, who the guy was like, what are you doing, was Ray Natilli, who's, uh, again, worked multiple national championships. Of course games. he has. Yeah. All these guys have. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy's done a Final Four. Oh, yeah. He's, like, he's done what? a Final Four. It's done... like Kelvin, like Samson and the, and the Baylor AD. It's like, we need better officials. It's like, well, they... <laughs> well, you this, got a pretty good crew. This is, this is yeah. who they are. Like, I, <laughs> There's not like there's a farm system of... Uh, well, and again, like my thing with the roads, it, it came off like he was blaming the... Like, conference yeah it was just weird like it, whatever uh i want a good win for you Houston. thank our friends from wiffles hybrids let's do our wiffles hybrids big 12 segment i was here. talking to plant uh, your independence plant wiffles i was talking to a guy yesterday and he's like hey uh to talk about advertising on second plan he's like yeah, i hear that wiffles thing all the time i was like yeah you're, you're darn right your independence do. let's go figure it out our advertising works so well like it's hard to put like, when people how much does it cost because you know Colin price. Newell has sold like 70 insurance policies through us. He should be taking me on a cruise. <laughs> I'll go too, Colin. Just kidding. We'll see we'll Colin tonight. See. I love Colin. Give we'll him a shout bring out. Bring Brock Purdy with us. Farm Bureau Financial Services, baby. The um, All right, let's do your Big 12 segment here. I'm more looking at saturdays i guess we can do last night's scoreboard real quick um, 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 um hold on come on espn get a better interface we've got yeah the houston game was just weird samson loses his mind and that was not close baylor takes care of texas tech that game was really close for 30 minutes and then baylor kind of stretched its legs and then tech made it interesting again oklahoma beat byu gosh i wish i would have that was a predictable game. Yeah, the spread was probably what? Two? Two the spread was one and a half. Ugh. Pound Oklahoma in that spot. Okay, um, Saturday's games. We've got TCU at Iowa State. That starts things off 1 o'clock. That game will not be on the Longhorn Network. You that can watch it on ESPN. Deuce. You've got... They, get a, they have had a week off, by the way. This is a... Uh, this is a tricky, tricky game. game. This is a sneaky tricky, game for uh, Iowa State. I, 100%. This... Yeah. And Iowa State's feeling really good about itself. You've been on the road for a week. Really, yeah, tricky. the crowd needs to be... You got to be ready to lock in, everybody. Yeah, I know it's not Kansas. It's not Houston. This is where Iowa State fans can take a step up, in my opinion. Totally agree. Is specifically the students. The students get really high for the, like, quote-unquote rivalry games. Yep. And then, But they're still there for games like... But there's not the... They got to bring that energy. You need it. You got to yeah, have it. There's no days off. Yep. Uh, TCU will be, um, I'm guessing, a six, six, six seven and a half point yeah. underdog in that game. Yep. So phew, that, I wouldn't want to lay all those points. TCU is a good team. They're, They're I, I, considerably I, better than that. The uh, West Virginia at Texas, boring. Boring. Houston at Cincinnati. Hold on, real quick on Texas. Yeah. We got to discuss. Our guy Rodney Terry. I, I mean, he's a bottom five what coach in, the in world high major college basketball. So two things on Rodney Terry. He's bad, right? Like I'm not just I, imagining this, am I? I thought there was a couple of just 
what type of things last well, night? Well, he fell into the job, Brent. He didn't. I, you know, this isn't like Texas went out and be like, well, oh, we're going so, on a nationwide okay, search. Three three ob- observations. I thought their roster construction this summer was just totally bizarre. Like, again, Hunter, A. Smith, and they, they have no size in the backcourt, and their bigs are pretty light as well. It's a it's a weirdly constructed team. That's the coach's responsibility. Sorry, because you you cannot play NIL with Texas. No, I mean you got to do a better job than what they did. Uh, and then s- secondly, how about this? Iowa State has now had four games in a row where the opposing coach has gotten a technical foul. So ever since Tang, so is this the curse of Cyclone Jim Carrey has literally infiltrated the other op- opposing sideline? Tang. And then self, and then Drew got ejected, and and Terry gets a really bad tee again last night. Like that ultimately cost them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. the worst part of it, what his Iowa State's up three. There is thirty eight seconds on the clock, forty one seconds, and he doesn't foul when yeah. Iowa State is in the one and one. Inexcusable. This, it was like that. The is worst a, free throw shooting team in the a league. Fireable effect. Like it was complete malpractice. Put Lipsy at the line. You, you put anybody at like you have to extend the game. He basically gave Iowa State, uh, in large part, the win because even if Iowa State misses there, you know, on that possession, Iowa State's going to foul. This is I mean, why people say to this guy, worry about your own damn yeah, team instead exactly. of coaching because he, he screws up like this all was, the time, Brent. That was like middle school esque decision making. That, and I, I, how did one of his coaches say, hey, R- hey, Rod, like, you ever think about foul here, quitting all this and just becoming a coach? I've thought about that, dropping all of this and be like, I'm going to go up to our, our buddy, Ben Anderson, over in Bondurant and be like, well, let me coach your freshman team. <laughs> well, I, we are going to put in a system here. 40 I, minutes of hell. I at least, I feel pretty comfortable. I would know when to foul when you're down three with 40 seconds left against the Bloom, conference's worst free throw shooting team. wearing his Eustachy turtleneck 2024. So this is, this is, I'm sure this gentleman isn't listening, but there was a, a former uh, a talk show host on KX Snow who's also on WHO. Steve Days. I didn't say the name. Okay. That famously once uh, said oh, to I know where this is going to somebody in, in near the Iowa State program. Yeah. That that if you gave me a couple of months, I could be an elite offensive coordinator in college football. Opportunity's still there. <laughs> All right, I'll work Matt tonight. <laughs> yeah. A little pissed off that you didn't get in touch with my people. Hundred percent dead serious. By the way. Anyone can run with the Mike Leach offense. Five plays, <laughs> you know? right, Aiden? Yeah, that's all you need. I was thinking it, but I didn't want to say it because I don't want to overdo the air raid thing. But you totally think you could no. run offense? No, but I, I, I'm, I'm saying that it's more... I, I believe this. Brent, I've had this opinion for 10 years. You can back me on this. I've always thought that these coaches often make it more difficult than it has to be. Absolutely true. Like, and, and, and that's kind of what Brent's saying here is that's a by the book foul. I, you, like, th- it, you're, what are you, either you didn't think about it and you're not paying attention or you're overthinking something. And you right? got, and they have like two staff people for every player they have. Like, somebody's got to say, hey, Rod, hey, like, this isn't, this isn't a good idea here. Everybody else and their brother knows you need to foul. You extend the game. It was just, at that point, I was like, I would say it's winning the game out of their pure idiocy, and it made me very happy. Uh, Tyrese Hunter didn't score. He, he did not. Just throwing that out there. I uh, would say uh, the bucket was not walking. <laughs> Fr- free uh, air? What was free, the... Free smoke? Smoke. The smoke... Uh, yeah, because you can't see air. The smoke, smoke is was, what's in the thing. The yeah. smoke was not there. So Cincinnati is hosting Houston... Cincinnati remains to be the one Big 12 team that I don't think I've really watched. So I, I got to... Yeah, RC Cola. Maybe lock into that. Uh, Central Florida is at Texas Tech. That's an interesting game. Hmm. Tech needs that one. That's an interesting... Tech's done. Stick a fork in them as far as a chance. We told you that that team was never a Big 12 championship contender. We have Baylor at Kansas. Yeah. Five o'clock tip. Scott Drew and Bill Self. And daddy's going to be over here just salivating all over the TV. This is Big 12 basketball, baby. You get Dixon Otzelberger. You get Self versus Scott Drew. What a hell of a day then, that we have for the Big got, 12. You got Tang for the nightcap. You've got Tang in that 
weak BYU coach that <laughs> downplayed the oh the horns down. That is not what our program's about. Meanwhile, Keyshawn just goes boop, drops so the he, horns down the second about, after the who game. Who was going to stomp on the logo? It was it, we we thought it was going to be either Big Big Rob or Keyshawn. Well, Keyshawn held up his end with the horns down. Way to go, Keyshawn. <sighs> I uh I did a little looking last night too. Tashid Carr is active on social media. I feel like that's a great off-season podcast to get Tashid Carr on to talk about stomping on the Texas logo at some point, right? Oh, yeah. He Wouldn't was that always be great? a personality. We need to do a better job of reaching out to these. I'm talking Probably. like 20-year-old dudes, like not, not just Mahoney and Woody. Like, go back and get some of these the sto- legends, I, we need these to, stories. The, we need to do Wayne, a better specifically job. Specifically the Wayne Morgan era. Oh, God, there's epic. so many good stories. I freaking love Tashid those stories. He was always a good dude. He was a good he dude. Was a good dude. I like to shoot. Yeah, he actually had a nice career. He went from Iowa State then to St. Joe's. St. Joe's, made yeah. A tournament, I believe. So, and then we have the we have Bedlam, Oklahoma State at Oklahoma. Nobody cares. And then Kansas yeah. State at BYU is interesting. That's interesting. Based the BYU thing is they're still eighth in the net. They are four and five in the Big Twelve. They analytically one of the weirdest teams I can ever remember. I, they ever remember. Yeah, I think they're still pretty good. I, they're three and five quad know. one, two and one quad two. And their only loss at home was to Cincinnati, right? In the opener. Is that and it? By double digits. Yeah, and they've been good there otherwise. They had some good non conference wins, but like, I mean. No, they I lost to Houston at home too. I take that back. Kansas State. Did exactly what I thought they would. Total desperation mode against Kansas on Monday night. They beat them. And then did you see how does that carry over well, to again? Utah? Uh, Bruce Willis and his staff got uh, into it with Kansas. <laughs> Bruce Willis. Got into it was it the Kansas same guy in the locker room. It was the same guy who cussed out the manager. I was, you, I, hey, I well, was texting my Kansas beat writer friends. I'm like, which one? Gotta be, it? Be. So watch that handshake. The self tang handshake. If you go back and you want to entertain yourself, it was the quickest handshake I have seen. It I did like, a little checking. I don't think Bill Self's a big fan. <laughs> Based on that handshake, but that was a win-win. Good for Tang. That was it a win-win for Iowa State for yes. the conference. Because if Kansas and State Omaha. loses, you're happy. But realistically, you needed Kansas well, State to win that and, game. And then again, I was okay with Kansas losing there because you still have to worry about the Omaha site for the NCAA tournament. That's a real thing. And so actually can I mean, Kansas, Iowa State, they could technically both be there, but that's something to keep yeah, an eye on. The, too. the one thing I've still to this point never really understood with the NCAA tournament is how they do the sites. Is my like that to me seems more sporadic than like the seating I always understand. But like I was looking at Lenardi yesterday. He had Iowa State as a four in Spokane. Like yeah, I, I would I don't, guess I don't know if he's trying they're, to they're get not the, trying yeah. as hard yet. Gotcha. I, and it, it's not perfect, but literally they. Rank- Would you rather be a two seed in the state of Washington or yes. a three seed in Oklahoma? Okay. Or oh, uh, in, in Omaha? I'm sorry. Oh, at that point, I'd probably rather be a three in Omaha. Right? Would you? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just. I mean, you're gonna get. They, there would be fifteen thousand Cyclone fans in Omaha. And it would where you would have maybe two thousand. Yeah. So it would be a huge advantage now. Two versus three. Ah, eh. I don't know. I was thinking about that when I was looking at Nard Dogs. It's fun to think about being a top four seed again, though. Like that. Last time Iowa State was a two seed. Uh, last time was it? Was in... Nope. Yep. Not Mer- talking about Steve Merfeld. Not talking about. Seat up. Well, I'm not trying to like. Well, I'm I... not trolling you. I'm. I was. I was just confirming what I thought. And I believe Aiden. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Aiden, last, Aiden wasn't even alive. Well, what I believe about last time I Iowa still, State was a. Th- I still hate redacted. Yeah, redacted. I believe, Were you alive when Iowa State lost to Hampton? No, redacted. So that was 2002, right? One. One. So yeah, it would have been before I was born. What? So it, it it, what age? year were born you? In September of 2001. At what year was your fetus released to the world? What in the world? Why? Why do you have to say it like yeah. that? So I was say I was gonna I was gonna say, and this does not help everybody's mindset here. I believe the last time I would say it was a three seed was uh, the other redacted team. 
I think the last UAB? time that yeah, the UAB game. Iowa State lost a heartbreaker to Baylor and then beat Texas the following week and got a three seed was, yeah, that team. That team. Sorry this team is, I, uh, never mind. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to release that juju out into the world. But yeah, I think I, hey, give me Omaha over Louisville or Boise. Louisville is back into the mix. No, this I'm year. Just saying that's where oh. Iowa State lost. Yeah. And it was, it was I was going to say, I don't want to go back to that. No, place. but Omaha, you're not going to be, you would have the crowd behind you no matter what time. So you couldn't have a sleepy 11 a.m. and then ruin the tournament. I was feel Iowa like State? We just got to get out of no, this. No, was Iowa State? Everything has been brought way down. Was I? Okay, no, I should never have said Steve Murfeld's name. When Iowa State made the Sweet 16 with Niang, I believe with played Iona, they were a four seed. Is that right? <sighs> with that was the Denver year. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yes. They were four. Okay, that went fine. Because they that was when they played Little Rock. Yeah, and who beat Purdue? Okay, so and Little Rock was a twelve. Yes. Yeah. So, but and that I was guess Chris Beard. The lat. So, anytime I say it's been a top three seed has not gone well. So, except tank. for the, the two thousand was a two seed and they got to the lead eight. So you're saying you that they should tank? No. To no. get to the four line. Nope. Past past yeah. performance does not indicate future success. 2014, they were a three seed. When Kane hit the shot over North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that was a good year. Okay, that's a good year. Thank you, Wayne. Um, that makes me feel that better. That was the Niang broken foot game. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was going back. Again, I've been working on that game. And nobody and, gave Iowa State a chance in that game. Notre Dame? Or uh, not Notre Dame. The North Carolina, Carolina game. No. No. Without Niang. And that was the classic. That game was wild. I'll, I'll take this to my grave. The best thing that happened to this team we can leave it on this, leave it on a high. Yep. Yeah. Was tame and missing that TCU game. Because it's completely Great changed point. the assertiveness level of Jones and Keyshawn. Yep. They not assertive guys, but I think there's a level of this is Taman's team. We, you know, we kind of follow him. It's still the case. Taman's still their leader. But on the floor now. I mean, I was looking at the rotations on Ken Palm and stuff. Like, Keyshawn is in control of that offense. It's been a really positive thing to – and maybe you probably still get there with these two yeah, guys, but I think that it really expedited it by having Taman sit out that I, game. So I, I thought about this as well, um, and, and credit to all those portal guys, but would you take any of the – Texas guards in this league, in this league, okay, keep in mind physicality is at a premium over any of the Texas guards. Like, who would you know? No, I mean, I would especially playing for us. I think like I'd rather wouldn't... have I'd rather have Gilbert and Jones than Aismas. And I know Aismas is a great player. He scores a bunch of points. Yeah, but he's too ball he's heavy. Just, he's ball like, heavy, and, yeah. he get, and he gets. I don't just want dominated Hunter. on the defense. They have not developed Tyrese well. All. Tyrese needs to transfer for his but, final year. I, and but I, I guess my point is. Both Jones and Gilbert, and then Pav showed you something as well. They did it at all levels. Like I thought, that's the most impressive thing with Curtis. He came in as this reputation as a shooter. He has become a really good defender, mm -hmm. and then he can also now get to the rim a little bit and uh, he's, in the mid range. Even like early he's, in the season when he wasn't making shots, he was a good defender. Yeah, he's that is that has been my biggest surprise for him was how quickly he has grown into an awesome defender. And Gilbert, so I. That's just a credit to, I think that's why I've seen so much balance is those guards are literally two-way players. They can do everything. And the, the Texas guys just simply can't. Fun show. You know why in uh, the, that chapter is with the um, North, North Carolina win was the night that Scott Drew oh, ran into the locker room yeah, like go, a go maniac. Go Big 12! Yeah! Go Cyclones! Ten years ago, pal. Wild times, man. It's been a it's been a fun run. Yeah, it's been TCU. Been hey, a fun get, run. Get up there on Saturday, would you? And then stay for the women's game. Yeah, and they, they got a they huge game. Oklahoma. They need that need one. Need it. They need that one bad. Yes, coming up on Saturday. All right, uh, looking forward to seeing some of you tonight. We are going to have a video recap available to subscribers, correct? Or is that going out to everybody? Uh, 
we are just gonna do a highlight highlights yeah, yeah. but a highlights. recap recap yes yeah we're not gonna we're not gonna air the whole thing. we're not gonna air the whole thing but it'll be so thank you everybody you can by the way still i'm gonna tweet out a link right now um can check we out the at auction least, items like i'm just trying to like the road staff they'd be buying shots for people they you know they can the the co- there is plenty I feel of, like, plenty I mean, of alcohol available. Can John Haycock do some shots with some fans? That's all. Could we have him? Yeah. Hey, he ask him. He'll be there. I just don't see Nate Shieldhouse doing what Tom Herman would do, you know do who with those would? things. Do you know who's Clanton? Clanton's our guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's Clanton. He, can... he married a Southern Iowa girl too. Oh, is that right? Yep. Clanton. Glenn, get after him. Pretty sure. I don't know that for mm-hmm. a fact. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to misspeak for you, Ryan, because you could destroy me. I'm just saying, like, that, listen, I I appreciate what you've turned this into, you and your team. Yeah. This is this is great, and you're going to make a lot of money and well, all so that's, stuff. that's the goal. Yeah. We need a semblance of the old school I CF know. party. And it's, so we so we talked about this. We need just a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of, so my feelings it's, don't get hurt. No, it's going to get a little rowdy. A little rowdy and a lot of fun. It's going to get a little rowdy tonight. I have a feeling yeah. there's going to be some stories that come out of this. I don't know what they're going to be that people are like, dang it. I wish I, why didn't I go to that? Good. And it might involve, and I've got a driver. So anyway, be a good time. I got a, I'm, I'm up on stage. I can't be getting drunk. <laughs> no, I'm not going to get drunk. Yeah. The, the bench is going to make an appearance. Soon. <laughs> the, the, is this our old bench warmers where we used to No, the Amish push, bench, the Amish bench. Oh it's God, here we go. Yeah. All right. He's Brent Bloom, Aiden Wyan, Aiden Wyatt producing as always. We're presented by our friends at MacDyne and the Wild Rose Casino Studios and our friends from Cody Road Bourbon. We'll be back on Sunday night for a little Super Bowl recap show for you. For Brent Bloom, I'm Chris Williams. Have a great rest of your Wednesday.